Friends, it's Thursday, January 11, 2024. And I'm going to read for you today in this DPC video devotional one of uh, some powerful verses that come from Peter. And it's Peter's first letter. Chapter 1, I'm going to start with halfway through verse 18 and read verse 19. You know, Peter says, that you were ransomed. And that's a, a word from a practice that ancient peoples had uh, of, of taking prisoners and holding them for ransom. And sometimes you see terrorist groups doing this now or criminal gangs that want to wring money out of people. They, they kidnap them and then they hold them for ransom. You were ransomed from the feudal ways that you inherited from your ancestors. <laughs> There's a tough sentence. Not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like a lamb without defect or blemish. So our great hymn writer, uh, Robert Robinson, in his third verse, has this haunting line. He says, Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, and then here it is, he to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. And that precious blood is a reference to this uh, passage in Peter, where Peter says, you know, this isn't about silver or gold. God didn't just reach into the treasury here. He, he shed blood in order to save us all from danger. And this is a reassurance about how important we are to God, but also how dire our situation is. And, you know, there's some... Um, aspects of Jesus ministry that are just pure fun to preach on because they 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 open people's eyes. A lot of people don't know anything about the teaching of Jesus in the modern era and they're shocked that a lot of uh, sensibilities they think first emerged in history in the 21st century uh, or late in the 20th century actually he is already expressing and acting in these ways in the first century. He anticipates all these modern sensibilities in, 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 in remarkable ways. We talk about the excluded and the marginalized. Well, he ministered to those people. He included them. He, he gave dignity to those who were, who were forlorn and uh, abandoned. He, he did this with the disabled. He did this with the diseased. He did it with uh, non-Jews. He did it with uh, women who, who, were, who, who play, were only allowed to play a limited role in the collective life of their communities. And so all of this was a dramatic thing, which many of these ideas we take for granted now in the 21st century, but this was doing it two millennia before uh, we, uh, our civilizations had moved towards it. They're, st they're still catching up with where he was. And it's fun to talk about that. It's eye-opening for people. But what's often very challenging is the other side, that he also has viewpoints that are uh, don't merely anticipate where we are now, but they contradict it. Because in our society, independence is a huge value. And people assume that because it's a goal to have economic independence and uh, you know to be independent of their parents and to be uh, not dependent on the, on the government and to be just a, a, a fully, to be an adult, to be a fully functioning in, adult in our society is to be independent primarily. But there is no such thing as spiritual independence. And Jesus makes this very clear, and so does Peter. Uh, we needed to be rescued from danger. There are many things in life we cannot handle on our own. And that is that is a startling reality about life. And the sooner we understand it, the better. We can't deal with death and dissolution on our own. Uh, we can't find the way to things that are, that are fundamentally true and good on our own without getting ourselves into confusion and difficulty. Uh, we can't become the people we're meant to be. We can't chart our own courses in a way that is really spiritually deep and rewarding uh, without help. Uh, we can't deal with the guilt and shame that we accumulate in life on our own. We can't, you know, will, will it away with therapy or ignore it without doing damage to who we are. So in all these ways, we need God's mercy and goodness and grace and guidance and direction and all these other things he wants to give us. Uh, and the sooner we understand that, the better. Uh, but boy, is he willing. He interposed something more precious than silver or gold, his precious blood. 
Let's pray. Lord, we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone, but we also live and serve and grow by grace alone, through faith alone in Christ alone. And we thank you for solving problems we could never solve and healing wounds we couldn't heal and opening doors that would have been forever, forever shut without you. We thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen.